Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Dixon, in your testimony, you touch on industry codes of conduct. Can you elaborate on how industry codes of conduct are intended to operate under the GDPR and whether you think such codes of conduct uh, enhance compliance with the law? So codes of conduct are a new feature of EU data protection law, and we do believe that they're going to pay dividends uh, once, once they get off the ground. The European Data Protection Board has recently issued guidance on how it's intended the codes of conduct would work. And in the first instance, it's up to industry groupings to bring forward proposed uh, codes of conduct that they would agree to implement. They have the benefits of creating a level playing field within industry sectors and driving up standards. Another key feature of codes of conduct under the GDPR is that it's intended that there would be a, an independent monitoring body paid for by the industry sector that would monitor compliance with the code of conduct uh, and ensure that complaints from individuals that the exercise of their rights, for example, uh, isn't being adhered to or are dealt with efficiently. So this is an area of the GDPR that we look forward to rolling out uh, over the coming years. Okay. Let me just direct this to, uh, to everybody, and it's more of a general question, um, but Mr. Polineski, uh, Mr. Steyer, Ms. Uh, Giuliani, um, with respect to privacy expectations for consumers here in the United States. Do you think the, the status quo is working, yes or no? No, uh, but I would tell you that there's been a sea change in awareness in the last year. I think one of the most encouraging things that we've seen, other than the bipartisanship, I think, in understanding these are issues that affect everybody, is that the public is finally coming to understand that privacy really matters. Remember, it's a fundamental right, but people have forgotten that. And Mike, I have four kids, and I remember talking to my kids about this a few years ago, about do you even respect, do you even understand what privacy is? So I think we're at a watershed moment, which I think the work of this committee and the broader Senate and Congress will drive forward, that the public is finally understanding this is really my own personal information. It's really important, and I have the right to control it. So I think we're at a great moment. I think that, honestly, Senator Thume, then if, if this committee moves forward and the Senate moves forward, I think it will be incredibly important, not just legally and, and, and from an enforcement and accountability standpoint on for, the, for behavior, but public awareness. Okay. So I think we're at a really important tipping point that you all can drive forward in a very important way. Okay. Yeah. Senator, my 17-year-old son is sitting behind me, and I've got a 15-year-old daughter, and it's been fascinating to see how they have been using technology, and I don't think they think about it in terms of privacy. All they know is that their Instagram page shouldn't have all of their photos, it should have the ones they curate. And they may have another account that they use a little more flexibly, a little more sloppily. My son is a big Snapchat user and he's not thinking about it, oh, my pictures disappear. He's just, I'm just saying hi, why should that be around forever? And so I'm optimistic that the technology is finally capturing the actual reality of how people act. Somehow when some of these sites launched, the notion was the more you share, the more people click on it, the more people see your stuff, and there's a place for that, for activism, for, for outreach, but that's not the default for the way most of us live. We wanna talk to friends and family and small groups and alumni groups and the like, and somehow the engineering answer was, sorry, if it's on the internet and it's public, it's public for everybody. So these aren't perfect, you know, it's not perfect privacy when your photo disappears, it's probably somewhere, but it gave me a level of obscurity that actually ends up being critical and nuanced. So I'd like to see us nudge companies to solve some of these problems by having technology reflect the way humans act, right? It's supposed to be in service of yeah. our needs, not in service solely of advertising and marketing. I see that pushback happening. I'd like to think it's because of privacy pressure, but I actually think it's because of what the younger generation actually wants. And they don't call it privacy, they call it this is the way I think about my relationships. But the answer is no, status quo is not working. The status quo is not working, uh, but I think Juliana, there's progress. The, yes or no, okay. yeah. I, yeah. I need another I, question I need to ask here. Yeah, but. yeah the, the status quo is not working, and I just want to highlight, I think that we're increasingly understanding that that status quo is hurting vulnerable populations, in some cases the most, um, you know, exacerbating economic inequality and in some of those issues. And so I think the law should reflect um, the special harm that's being placed on consumers. Yeah. Well, and I, I agree the status quo is not working, which is exactly why this committee uh, began to lay the groundwork for privacy, privacy legislation in the last Congress, and we're building on that. I believe it's one of the issues that Congress should be able to work on together on a bipartisan basis, and I look forward to working with Chairman Wicker and other members of this committee uh, to find consensus on this uh, very important issue. Um, one very quick final question, and uh, and that again, I think it can be yes or no, but on principle, 
Um, would any of you oppose any federal law with preemption in it? Yes or no? We would have serious concerns with broad federal preemption. I have serious concerns with broad federal preemption. Okay. I think preemption can be done carefully so that it preempts the inconsistencies that make compliance hard, but preserve the rights and protections that I think we want to preserve. Okay. I would uh, be interested, and I guess we can take this for the record, uh, Mr. Chairman, but uh, in your thoughts, you all refer to a federal law as strong as California, and uh, just to maybe speak specifically to uh, what you mean by that. Okay. Go on. Thank you.